John Kerry stumps for Joe Biden in Iowa and New Hampshire, <laughs> and the former VP sits down with NPR and Axios. Team Rising is here to weigh in on that. Andrew Feldman is a Democratic strategist, and Inez Stepman is a senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum. Two great friends of the show. Great to see you. Great to see you guys. Hey, happy Monday. All right, so John Kerry, they think that that's going to put uh, Biden over the edge in New Hampshire. Going to get that John he, Kerry bump. Uh, had a very inspiring pitch for Joe Biden over the weekend. Let's take a listen. When I hear some people draw these little minor distinctions between some of the candidates, I must say to you, I, I'm tempted to be a little bit like Rhett Butler and gone with the wind and say, frankly, I don't give a damn. The difference is really whether or not we're going to have a president who's decent, who's experienced, who knows how to lead the nation, who has relationships all around the world, who on day one can begin to heal a world that is broken because of what Donald Trump has done to trample on it and pull it apart. Ooh, that, that joke, first of all, didn't <laughs> land very well. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, Inez, that seems like a very 2016 message. Oh, Trump is terrible. The world is laughing at us. Well, I mean, that was Biden's entire ad. I mean, so much of it, I mean, it just didn't work uh, with Hillary Clinton. It's a terrible yeah. attack. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even even in that crowd, yeah. that joke yeah. landed. Right. Even like, there, sort of a yeah. cringe laugh, yeah, right? Was. Um, was like, you know, we got Gone with the Wind. The person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, we're, you're talking about 2016. We're right. talking about Gone with the Wind yeah. and Malarkey. So I think you're actually way too the wind are in the on timeline. the no malarkey tour. <laughs> Yeah. See, I actually find some of this endearing. Yeah. Like, it, it it calls us back to a better time mm -hmm. when you could label your campaign no malarkey and yeah. go on a bus around yeah. the country. Yeah. I mean, I find it endearing, but I don't think that it's actually particularly, no. um, it, I don't think it connects well with the Democratic audience of today. Um, and, and furthermore, John Kerry, right? I, I don't know that there's, I don't know what the, the percentage of the Democratic Party that was waiting for John yes. Kerry to endorse. I'm guessing it was very, very low. <laughs> yeah. And I I'm guessing that if anyone was in that camp, they're probably already voting for Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, right. I think it's more, the Kerry endorsement is more a signal of the establishment is getting in line, yeah. right? They had their moments with Kamala and with Warren and with Pete Jill and yeah. with Jill yeah. Brand. Yeah. <laughs> it was right. a brief moment. Yeah. Yeah. But Very now, brief. like, we're getting down to it and it's time to get get in line behind Joe, and that's what John Kerry is doing. Well, I would love for you to play that clip again. Did you see the man sleeping behind uh, John <laughs> yeah, Kerry's yeah. Uh, shoulder? I mean, I, I think this was more, I think honestly, you know, just from seeing the tweets over the weekend, talking yeah. to some reporters on the trail, to me, this seems like it was more uh, placating to John Kerry, giving John Kerry a pat on the back, say, say, you know, come out with us and, and let's have you stop talking to the New York Times about <laughs> you're still thinking about getting in, you know, come out yeah, here. Yeah. Because John Kerry is not inspirational. Yeah. He has never been inspirational. And he's a, he was a stand-up, you know, look, Massachusetts senator, long career, right. public servant. But he's not inspiring any no. voters, right? It's, it's not, that's not, Joe Biden is much more of an inspiration than John Kerry. So I don't blame the guy uh, behind John <laughs> Kerry's shoulder for falling asleep. <laughs> so I really think this was something that uh, the campaign did yeah. politically to say, hey, John, come that, out with us. That is an interesting note. It is yeah, so funny, like though. Uh, throw them a bone. Right. Oh, absolutely. You're relevant. Absolutely. Come on the trail with us. They should get together. Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, oh. John Kerry, yeah. all of them board the no malarkey bus yes, and I mean, let the magic it's happen. Like, it's, it's, it's such <laughs> an, a th it's, it's crazy to just watch they this They can read hit ups. a lot of early bird specials along yeah. the way, yeah. I think. That <laughs> and Kerry even said, he's like, I won Popular Iowa there. and Ohio, so I know, you know, who exactly who can win those states. I'm like, whoa, yeah. well, first I'm of all, it's been a long time since 2004. It's also, I'm also yeah. wondering if the campaign, yeah. I, to me this doesn't, I don't think voters are thinking like yes. this, but remember, at this point in tw 2003, leading up to 2004, John Kerry was in sixth place yeah. uh, in the Iowa polls. So I, I, maybe I'm the only one reading into this, but the yeah. campaign may be bringing him out to say, well, look, we're down in Iowa, but we're not out. But then he wasn't even in Iowa, right? He was sure. in New Hampshire. I'm, I don't know. I don't really get the, the strategy. Has, so much of it, though, just seems not to connect with a 2020 no. message, and that's really what the, what I think. I mean, he's like, who can you know aspire to the world? I mean, it's very much leaning into that, like, oh, the world. You know, he, he, Trump is an uncouth man who has offended the world, as if you know that is supposed to be touching the lives of Americans. When they're, what's the number one concern? Health care. Did you hear that talked about there? I mean, minor differences between candidates. That really just goes to show how much he minimizes the domestic turmoil. That 
that Kerry and Biden have overseen for the last 30, 40 years. Well, we've talked about this on this yeah. show before, right? But the high percentages of people in both the left and the right who want to burn down the institutions, yes. right? Um, they are not satisfied with how politics has been conducted for the last 30 or 40 years. Um, and so it's not really helpful, I don't think, uh, to have all of these candidates from previous years lining up because, and I, I know, you know, Crystal is among them, you know, Democrats are frustrated with their candidates for the last few cycles. Republicans were incredibly frustrated with their candidates for the last few cycles, exactly because there didn't seem to be a whole lot of distinction between the two parties. Um, and, and the bases, meanwhile, have polarized, and they, they have very strong disagreements about where the country needs to go, but they agree on the fact that the status quo that the establishment has created for the last 30 or 40 years is no longer acceptable. Yeah. And that's not the messaging you hear on the no malarkey bus. Well, and to that point, I mean, look, Biden can't run on issues because he loses on issues, right. right? He's not most trusted on health care. He's not most trusted on climate change. And those are the two issues that Democratic primary voters rate as top among their concerns. Um, on the other hand, you know, he was also on Axios over the weekend on their HBO show, and he got pressed a little bit on Hunter and what he was doing sitting on that board and whether he would ban family members if he was in uh, the Oval Office from doing such things. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I don't know what he was doing. I know he was on the board. I found out he was on the board after he was on the board, and that was it. And there's nobody... Well, no you've had said, a lot of time. Isn't this something you want to get to the bottom of? No, because I trust my son. But that doesn't pass the smell test. Like, when you're vice president, isn't there a higher standard? Don't you need to know no. what's happening with your family? Don't you need to put down no. some guardrails? Un un unless there was something that was... Uh, there was something on its face that was wrong. There's nothing on its face that was wrong. So Look, if you want to talk about problems, you know, let's talk about Trump's family. I mean, come on. This is... So... <laughs> These so, guys are amazing. So you think that everything that happened was kosher? You know there's not one single bit of evidence, not one little tiny bit, to suggest anything done was wrong. You know that. But you keep asking me these questions. It's okay. He, you, know, you're, you're, you know, you're doing what you have to do. But I'm not worried about it. Look, the American public knows me. I, I yes. genuinely think what? he doesn't understand why this is a problem, because this type of corruption yeah. is so commonplace and rife within Washington, and he's been personally engaging in it and his family members for decades. So he's like, what's the problem and now? I want to this point is out, amazing. It's not even true. The U.S. envoy to Ukraine testified in this mm -hmm. impeachment hearing that the Democrats are making us all sit through, in which he said, I personally raised this issue with Biden's staff who raised the issue with the vice president. He was it's made aware of, of it as a conflict Look, of interest. Look, here's, here's my... Just, it just is. Here's yeah. the frustrating thing, if I'm a staffer yeah. for Joe Biden. I mean, how many times, and I hope they've prepped this question over right. and over and over and over. This is not going away. No. So you yeah. need to get comfortable right. answering the damn question. <laughs> and every time he's asked this question, he feels, he looks so uncomfortable. Well, guess what? Hunter Biden went on ABC and said that it if was he was going to do it over again, he would he would yeah. do it over. So he doesn't need to say, well, my son said he, would, he wouldn't do it. He, would, he, he wouldn't do it again. Or he would do it differently. He can say, I agree with my son. And I would do it differently. Exactly. But Joe Biden is, is he's not going to change. This is who Joe Biden is, yeah. good and bad. He's running right now, and that's it. Well, at least he didn't challenge him to a push-up contest yes. or call him fat. He probably could have. So I still that. think he could have probably beat Mike Allen on yeah. that, though. <laughs> Progress. That's good. I, I mean, he, so the former vice president also sat down with NPR. Uh, it was an even more of a disastrous interview. The, the, this was from Rachel Martin. Now, she's a great interviewer. She goes, why do you think there is an enthusiasm gap? He says, there isn't an enthusiasm gap. Later on, What the he's, hell are you talking he, he about? Says, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe that dude falling asleep. Yeah, he says, come with me on college campuses. <laughs> you don't see that. You guys keep saying that. By the way, we have College Pulse CEO who comes on this show once every two weeks to give us a check-in. Joe Biden is not consistently around the fourth or the fifth place. He's losing to in Andrew Yang. Of, he's losing to Andrew students. Yang. But also, I mean, throughout this entire interview, he gets challenged on Hunter. He says the exact same thing. There's been absolutely nothing wrong. But even worse was whenever he was talking about... What, he was talking about the enthusiasm gap. He also, Inez 
basically challenged Rachel Martin in this interview where he goes, you know, is she, about this enthusiasm gap, he says, well, she's like, well, Obama didn't have an enthusiasm gap and, and he came in 2008. He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. What actually happened is, is that he came in and then he picked me and every single time he wanted to push something through Congress, who did he send? And he goes, who did he send? Answer the question. And she's like, it's not my job to answer the question. <laughs> First of all, but here's the thing, Go it's not even true. It's obviously the answer It's to that just question. not true. I mean, this is mo all the political reporters in Washington. We lived through this. He was never sent as the grand viceroy to oh, Congress okay, well. in order to be, no, come on, what, what did he put, play a major role in? Like, yeah, go ahead, Andrew. No, well, for look, real. Look, I mean, I, I what major legislation? I think this is different than true. politics, right? Yeah. He he was did spearhead uh, the stimulus package, right? Yeah. He uh, yeah. led. He did lead that. He yeah. led on the auto bailout, whether you agree with it or not. Sure. He led on domestic violence. You're talking about on, 2009. I'm talking about 2010, all the way up to 2017. I mean, the truth is, is the guy didn't do very much in that last six years. So, yeah. I, I want to go back to yeah. that enthusiasm gap yeah. idea. Um, the idea that. Joe Biden was the enthusiasm yeah. on the Obama Biden ticket right. is, is <laughs> very very tenuous. Yeah, he lost one percent. Um, yeah. But I, I also want to talk about yeah. not being able to answer this question. This is kind of like Jeb Bush with the Iraq War yes. question, right? Sure. Where. He, whatever you think about it, he had to have an answer, but it was like he didn't even know that there was a gap between what he was saying and where the base was, mm. and he therefore was brushing off this question over and over again, even though he had got a thousand chances to answer it. Bill Clinton, same thing with the questions about Monica Lewinsky and the Me Too era. He never got together an answer for it. It's like because he didn't understand the difference between the answer he was giving and how that was landing today versus 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I, see this as the same thing, except that, you know, look, and he, he, the press is letting him get away with this. We're talking about impeachment all day for weeks on end, and we barely ever hear the yeah. words Hunter Biden. But once this moves to the Senate, and then certainly during the general election, Trump is not going to let him get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he has to come up with an answer, but it's, it's troubling that he doesn't even think that he has well, to. Yeah. And the enthusiasm right. thing well is a real issue for him because it speaks to electability. It speaks yeah, to whether right. people really believe that this guy is going to have the Remember, energy behind him to be. We Trump. had an enthusiasm gap in 2016. We are not going to win this election by just saying, look at Donald Trump, he's a criminal, et cetera, et cetera. We need excitement behind our candidate. And with Joe Biden, he has to realize that that's something he needs to catch up and figure yeah, out. And yeah, and said he just gaslights the whole press. Like, what are you talking what about? Talking Come to about? the college campus. You know what? Let's send it. Next time he goes to a college campus, we'll send we'll a crew, oh, and God, I'll, I'll, fi I'll figure out how well that goes. <laughs> All right, still right. we got it. Thanks, we got guys. more. Stick here. We'll be right back after this.